We have an area of the brain called the basal ganglia that control go functions like reaching out for a pen and no go, which is resisting the urge to do something. And these are circuits that are very mm. important for learning how to control attention and for controlling behavior. Young animals, puppies, humans don't do no go very well. <laughs> do you know the, the two marshmallow? Yeah. You offered kids a, a, two, a marshmallow and you say, if you don't eat it, you'll get two marshmallows. In 10 minutes. Um, in 10 or minutes, minutes, some right. kids can do it. That's pure, that's a no go task. You're saying, how well can you resist the urge to just go and eat the marshmallow? And there are a number of things that mimic this. Another no-go type behavior would be meditation, for instance, where you sit down, it's kind of painful to sit cross-legged, your thoughts are drawing you off, you remember something you need to do, and you're resisting the temptation to get up and do something else. And so this 90-minute work bout is a kind of combined meditation, but also functional work. 90-minute work bout is a serious, non-negotiable time in which I don't allow myself to be on the internet, I'm not checking email, I'm not texting, my phone is off, off, off. And it's a process of learning to focus. It's something that's kind of hard, and the thing to understand about this 90-minute work bout is that you should expect some friction early on. It's not like you just flip a switch and you're in. It takes some time to get into this focus mode, and throughout that time, your brain will flicker in and out. And there's a tool that you can use to enhance your focus prior to this 90 minute workout. And I actually do this. It sounds a little crazy, but it actually is grounded in really good neuroscience, which is that you place a crosshatch of, you know, just a target at some distance on a piece of paper and you force yourself to stare at it and not blink for about 30 to 60 seconds. And what you're doing is you're ramping up the neural circuits in the brain that drive go, no go, and harnessing your visual attention. Your focus. You're focusing. Visual focus drives cognitive focus. And for people that aren't sighted, auditory focus drives cognitive focus. So visual focused drives cognitive focus. Yes. These two little bits of, that we call eyes are, as uh, people probably heard me say before, are two little bits of brain that are outside the cranial vault. Mm -hmm. They're the only way that your brain knows what to do in terms of whether or not it's day or night, who's out there, etc. But it's also a mechanism by which you draw your attentional systems into from kind of everywhere. You know, imagine spotlights just kind of moving around, bringing those spotlights to a common location, and then intensifying that spotlight. Mm. And since most work involves what we call exterocepting, looking outside ourselves, this is very different than lie, you know, sitting in meditation where you're focusing internally. Because when you sit down to work. You kind of want to forget about your heartbeat and how your feet feel on the floor and that your back and you know might be a little sore or something. You want to be in the work. And so I do I set a timer and I force 90 minutes of this and it and it's really tough, Lewis. Some days, <laughs> some days I it's anything to go get something out of the fridge. Any get and, up and distract myself. And occasionally and I fail. I will get up and go do something and or I'll look at my phone. I do falter sometimes. But if you can learn to do this 90 minute bout. I bet consistently you can yeah. create some amazing work. You can do, you will do your best work. And what's really wonderful is it's not just about the work that you perform in that bout. What ends up happening is really special. This sort of combined meditation and work bout, as I'm calling it, has this effect of you are actually tuning up and making your neural circuits for focus and attention better. So that after that, okay, you flip on the internet, you check your email, you're doing text messaging, you're probably hungry now. What happens then is after lunch or something, you decide, oh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna sit down and, and read something or I'm gonna do some more work, but I've only got 20 minutes. You can drop in like a laser. It's it, because the circuits have learned, you, you recognize that state. It's a, I guess the, the analogy would be, you do your hardest workout in the morning mm -hmm. and you, you or maybe it's a skill learning period. I know because he used to play special sports. Yeah, yeah. And then in the afternoon, it's going to be hard to recreate that entire 90 yes. minute session. But you go back and you can drill it and you're right there because your nervous system recognizes you're right there. Mm -hmm. and, you, and so that's a, a, a holy part of my morning, as wow. holy as the sunlight viewing. Wow. And it's something that's very hard to build in, but I actually schedule it just like I would a Zoom. And it's really, it's cool because when you, you have a social interaction where someone comes to you and they say, I've got something to do and you're sort of distracted or it's something I need to tell you, you'll notice that you can quickly intensify that at uh, what we call attentional spotlight mm. in, in neuroscience. Wow. And so it's a skill. And I hear these days a lot about attention deficit and trouble focusing and indeed some people have 
clinically diagnosed attention deficit. And I want to, you know, I, there are resources for them. I did a whole podcast on ADHD, but many people don't have attention deficit in the clinical sense. They created it because they've never actually taught their brain how to focus for very long. And the phone's sitting right here and there's distraction everywhere. And then of course it raises all these questions. Like people say, well, do you listen to music? Do you mm. listen to white noise? There are a lot of tools and tricks. Sometimes music helps. Sometimes music hinders. Sometimes being in a cafe can help. Sometimes pure silence helps. It's, mm -hmm. it's really individual and it's really context dependent. So I don't sure. want to give sure. a, a, a prescriptive. But that 90 minute work bout, if I can do all those things and then get that 90 minute work bout and then eat my lunch, I feel like the, the system is set to make the rest of the day even better. Because we often hear about the perfect morning routine but we're not thinking about how that routine influences the rest of the mm, day's routine. Yes. So it's not like sets and reps in the gym where there's a fatigue and you, for instance, if you mm -hmm. do 10, you know, I'm making this up, I don't do these kinds of routines, but 10 sets of 10, it's very hard to maintain that output 20 minutes later. I noticed that with focus, it's something that you kind of drop into a groove. Now, after about 90 minutes, it's very hard to maintain that. And there's a lot of data showing that these 90 minute, what are called ultradian rhythms, you know, much of our life is broken up into 90 minute cycles. Mm -hmm. These 90 minute learning bouts are very good. 